G'day everyone, thanks for joining us again for another build video. Uh, quickly two shout outs. Firstly to Legendary Builder, a young scale modeler in the US, I believe in the US, who has encouraged me to do this video as he wanted me to build an, an American tank. So I had to, had to acquiesce and do something for him. Check out his channel, he's got some great stop motion stuff as you can see there, build reviews, all sorts of things, and he'd love to get 100 subscribers. Next thing is Reginald ESQ. Reginald was, uh, does a lot of game reviews online on YouTube and uh, he was kind enough to supply me with some garage shots of the M41 from World of Tanks so I could uh, duplicate one of their, one of their uh, paint schemes. Thanks very much for that buddy. Um, by all means check out his channel, he's got some great video reviews on there. And uh, yeah, I love, love looking at his stuff, so definitely give him a look. I'll put the uh, links for both of those in the description below. So, what we're building today, you would have seen a few of these online, uh, on YouTube especially. This is the uh, Walker Bulldog M41. Uh, this is Tamiya 135 scale. It is an old kit, and you see I've done a review on it on my channel as well, if you want to learn a bit more about it. Uh, but yeah, I thought, yeah, this would be a good tank to do. Let's have a bit of fun. And uh, so I went out and bought this one, and it's very cheap as well. So uh, it's a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, now, what you're seeing here is I started off playing around with the different uh, techniques, paint techniques, and everything like that. And uh, I started using the khaki colours from Tamiya, and they were just a bit too dark. So any pre shading I'd done just disappeared, and I ended up mucking around with uh, different shades of paint, as you'll see as we go until I get one that we're happy with. Now I was just using a soldering iron there as well, just to uh, warp the fenders a little bit, give me a bit of detail. I'm um, applying the paint a bit heavy as I'm just trying to find a shade that I like and uh, eventually you'll see what I do. I go from warm colors, uh, sorry, go from cool colors, so mixing the green with uh, a bit of white and then finally get a warm color with a bit of yellow, which is quite nice, I quite like it. But, uh, but we'll go through the build. I'm basing the paint scheme on a World of Tanks uh, paint scheme. So it's got like a window camo for the M41, uh, which Reginald sent me. So thanks again, mate. It was perfect reference. I loved it. And uh, even though mine's not exactly the same as that one, it uh, was based on that. And uh, just gave me a bit of uh, leeway, a bit of playing around. But yeah, let's just keep watching. You'll see me mucking around with the paints, trying to just get a bit of contrast in the kit, but not doing anything in particular, just trying to find it and get to a point where I'm happy with it. And uh, I did spend a bit of time mucking around with the khaki colours and I sort of settle on almost an, an olive drab sort of colour uh, later on as you see. But uh, yeah, we we'll skip the build portion of this video. The, the build is really simplistic on these kits. There's a tiny bit of tidy up as you would have seen in the beginning with a bit of puttying. I was moving some of the tools around so they're in the right position as in World of Tanks. Uh, not as not as on the guide for the Tamiya kit itself. So I've changed those around a bit. So I just need to fill those holes. Uh, a little bit of sanding. It's basic. It is such an easy kit to put together. It goes together beautifully. So I really wanted to show you this process. I mean, I, I really load the model with paint. I'm, there's the green I end up settling with. Uh, I really load the model with paint, just trying to get the right shades that I'm after. I'm not too concerned about it because what I'll do is I'll hit it with the um, a, a Tamiya Flat Clear and that'll blend all the paint together and it will actually get rid of any of um, areas where paint might have built up because I've been using too high pressure, which is what I'm doing. I am running it too high. So you can sort of see, I mean, this is sped up, but you can see how quickly it just la I'm laying the paint down, just trying to find a scheme I'm happy with. I haven't uh, done, I have not airbrushed an all green vehicle before, so this is the first one I've done. The only other American vehicle I built was a Stuart M5 by Tamiya, and uh, that was some time ago. I did that with, with a paintbrush, not with an airbrush. So. Just mucking around. I use a bit of the car key here, the original car key from Tamiya, going back to his uh, bit of post shading since I put so much paint on the, uh, the kit, all the pre shading or any pre shading that was there was completely gone.
All right, so using the khaki color again, I'll put some desert yellow into it as well. And just to lighten it up again, still keep it relatively warm instead of really fading it out. And I use this for highlights. So we do it on the hull and we do it on the turret as well. You won't actually see me painting the hull. I did it sort of semi freehand. Uh, I'd use some painting masks, but a lot of it I did freehand, whereas on the turret I masked the whole thing off because uh, there's just so many little lines on the uh, reference from World Tanks or Wargaming that uh, I needed to really be a bit more careful. I use a uh, hairspray technique, so it's actually the well, first time I can recall actually ever using it. Uh, go to, to seal the paint in first with the Tamiya acrylic, uh, sorry, Tamiya lacquer and um, seal all the paintwork down so it was nice and safe and then hit it with two big coats of hairspray, just a generic hairspray I got from the supermarket, nothing special. Uh, what, I think it was actually the cheapest one there, so just whatever they had. And um, once that dried, masked it off and you'll see me uh, removing the masks and then using the uh, wetting technique to get the uh, hairspray to activate underneath the white paint again and you can just sort of remove it. It's a bit more, it's a bit random than, a bit more random than what I'd like, but it was actually, you know, still a bit of fun. So, lower hull I masked, top of the hull, there, yeah, I did a tiny bit of masking, not much. And just use blue tack there for the masks, so you can see how it's come up, it's come up pretty well. So I wanted the top turret to be all hard edge, and just wet it down for the hairspray technique let it soak in the brush i'm using is very soft so you'll see me uh, even though it's sped up it's um, yeah there you go how quick i am it's like speedy gonzalez is trying to uh wipe, wipe off the, the paint but yeah just to work worked a bit faster on this because it was just a soft brush if i was using a hard brush i would have gone a bit slower but i wanted to use a soft brush as it was the first time I've done it and I wasn't sure how much I was going to be removing. You can see there, just fading it out a little bit on the top. I'm not really trying to remove great chunks. Just trying to uh, get it looking nice. Oops. Bit too much there. Not that happens. So saying that's just going back to the randomness. You can see how hard I'm working the rest of it, and just touch that bit, and it's and it's come off. But that's right. That happens. Now I changed the color of the fuel tanks uh, that are on the side of the turret uh, a couple of times during the video. I go back to a car key, and then eventually I said I'll settle on a nano green. We'll show you that as well. I uh, just wanted them to stand out from the rest of the tank. Uh, paint the road wheels with nato black get all that done as well as the uh, turret and um, you know, tools bits and pieces all around the, the vehicle which need, need to be fixed I really had so much fun on this kit it was a lot more interesting than I thought it was going to be to be honest Alright, so there we go, we're using NATO Green on the ammo box. I just wanted it to stand out like the uh, fuel cans. So we're going to hit the fuel cans with the NATO Green too in the next few seconds, I believe. Just gives it a bit of oh, a bit of depth, I suppose. Just pops a little bit. On with the maskings, I'll make sure I've removed any um, excess hairspray off parts that I might not have uh, wiped it down on just to make sure it doesn't interfere with any further paintwork later on and it's easy enough to do you just wet it and uh, remove it and obviously you don't remove it on the parts you've painted already because you'll remove the paint but uh, yeah it's just so I could give it a clear lacquer and continue on with the weathering the tracks a lot of people dread the vinyl tracks I have no problem with them whatsoever I just use a bit of Bob Smith Industries super glue put it on both portions of the both ends of the track clipped it together with a clothes peg done 
it's dry in about 10-15 minutes and then I'll just clip off the uh, locator tabs now you can do it the other way you can squish them down with a, a heated screwdriver but you don't really need to the, the Bob Smith industry stuff is really good works really well you can see I'm not really being all that delicate when I'm putting them on either I've never had them pop off doing that top of the tank clicks on it is such a nice fitting vehicle Alrighty, so there we go. So we're just going to start with the uh, pin washers, typical anemia, uh, anemia, bleh, forgive me everyone, typical Tamiya enamel wash black. Um, you can make up your own if you don't want to spend the money to get something like this. If you've got a bit of black enamel paint laying around, you can just mix it up yourself. Uh, just use a bit of thinner or mineral turpentine and uh, away you go. So that's what I used to do. The only reason why I use the Tamiya stuff is because it's consistent. I know I'm going to get the right, the same shade every time, and uh, it's just a bit more convenient instead of mixing it up each stage. Now, a lot of you will probably look at the filler caps on the back there and notice that uh, one of the, the filler cap at the bottom, I don't do any oil streaks or anything like that. Well, it's not actually a fuel filling point, it's just a, an opening port to check the dipstick level um, for the rear transmission, if I believe, if I'm correct. So I decided not to. Uh, do any real heavy streaking on the back of that. Um, the Chieftain's Hatch on YouTube does a uh, walk around on the Walker Bulldog, and I'm pretty certain that's what he says when he points it out. But uh, yeah, so I just decided to go a bit easy on that one because uh, it's not like it's going to be used for fuel refilling. Uh, some of you also may have noticed I've made a mistake with one of the tracks. I don't even notice it, and right, right up to the end, I'm just plugging away, building away, don't even notice that one of my mates pointed it out to me when I finally finished. I'm glad he did before I uh, did the video, so thank you Daniel. Uh, just cleaning up the excess wash here. I went pretty heavy on the wheels, but we're not going to see most of that later. So the World of Tank vehicles, they tend to be fairly heavily chipped, so you get a lot of heavy chipping on them, but you don't get much um, dirt and grime built up on them on a lot of their models so it's you might see a little bit of dust here and there but that's about it so they, they like to with the models like to uh, weather the paint a fair bit and uh, i quite like the look of them but i decided i even though i was inspired by the uh, world of tanks when i was going to muddy it up which you'll see a bit later now filters i thought i'd try something a bit different a lot of people use uh, oil colors like Winsor Newton or a beta lung I think it's called it's another one um, for the color modulation on the vehicles so for highlights lowlights etc I thought I would try something different this is just humbrol paint I basically um, put a bit of uh, mineral turps down on the areas and then used a humbrol paint as a filter and it worked really well the only thing I'd say where it doesn't really match up to the oil paints is just the amount of pigment it seems that the oil paints have more pigment in them than the uh, humbrol stuff so it's, you do have to work it a little bit harder um, put a bit more on but uh, I'm re was really happy with the, the effect I'm really surprised that it came out so well so uh, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on oil paints and you've got a few enamels laying around and you want to give it a try knock yourself but knock yourself out as you can see there the uh, just the effects that I've that achieved on the back. Now, similar thing too, I'm also using another Humbrol paint uh, to sort of replicate a streaking grime uh, effect, a little bit of uh, weathering effect, and that worked flawlessly as well. So, uh, if you don't want to go and spend a lot of money on things like that as well, you can, you can avoid it and still get a really good result. Just on the streak and grime, that was uh, Humbrol Mat 98 that I used for that. So just working the highlights now, the high areas and low areas of the vehicle, uh, just to make it pop. I dirty up the turret a lot. I used that mat to Humbrol again, as well as a bit of black to. Uh, just really make it look weathered and dirty up there and try and 
add a little bit of a rust effect without the rust effect just being in your face. I just wanted it nice and subtle. Now for the exhaust, I tried something a little unusual as well. So you see a lot of these vehicles, the exhausts are really heavily worn. All the paint gets burnt off and it's just a big rust effect. The World of Tanks one, once again, is a bit different. Uh, I'm just trying to replicate what they've got. Now I didn't use enamels or oils in this stage, I actually used acrylics. So I used uh, Panzer Aces 302 for uh, Vallejo and that's a dark rust. So I used that one as well as a game color charred brown. You would have seen me use those in other videos probably. But I just dab them around the uh, area. I just put them on like that and then dab them around similar to how you work the oil paints just to get the, the scorched or burnt effect that I'm looking for without completely getting rid of the underlying paint. And it worked perfectly. Uh, I was really happy with the result. Once again, if you don't like it, we've sealed the model with a lacquer so you can just wipe it off with a bit of thinner. Just a few highlights on the wheels. Most of this is going to be lost. But I thought, ah, while we're here, I'll have a bit of fun. And I just put too much on there, just wipe it off with a bit of a, a damp brush. Thinner on it, really simple. Just painting a few highlights here. Let's get some of the details to stand up a little bit more, just pop a bit. The bolt heads on the uh, guard there. So basically, I'll just use the same green that I used as a filter on the tank. Uh, I can just wipe it off really simply if I, if I don't like how much I've put on. And uh, do that on the raised areas for highlights, but then I'll go back and um, chip them later on as well. Just adding a bit more to, to the back here. I'm really surprised with how well this tank came out, to be honest, considering I was trying a whole heap of different things that I really hadn't done before. Um, so I was expecting a few failures, and uh, yeah, it's, it's come up beautiful. I'm stoked with the result. The paint chipping. Now that, uh, that's the travel lock for the gun. It's in the open position. If it was laid down like that, but little mechanism would be closed, but I just thought, ah, look, I'll just leave it. That's fine. There's actually another component which isn't in the kit where they used to lock it down when it wasn't in use. So this is just using the dark rust again. Vallejo dark rust. Acrylic. And uh, just laying it on the front here, I want to get the paint to look like it's been Know, rubbed off by the tank hitting obstacles like trees, dirt, whatever, and uh, just really wanted to have a subtle effect and not have it so in your face. So I sort of wanted it oxidised and not not fresh. And uh, I think that worked really well. Decals perform flawlessly. Um, nice thickness, went down really well. Um, and I've only used the two, because that's pretty much all there is on the other one. You can see there, that's where I've located the uh, exterior tools. And because that's painted in the original car key, I just update it with the colors that I've used on the rest of the vehicle now. Just start painting lighter shades on the areas, and just to get it to stand out a bit. back in, chip it up. It's pretty much done with that. So it's got, it's, a bit, it's got a bit of a shine on it, but we hit the uh, model before we finished with a flat coat uh, just to take the shine out of it. I decided I'd change the straps there. I wasn't sure if they were actually straps or if they were like a metal buckle or something. But I thought, ah, we just want a, a bit of point of difference. So 
we'll just pretend they're some sort of tie down and color them up. But I use actually a Tamiya tam tam brown panel liner on that just to uh, change the tone a little bit. Mud effects, really simple. Uh, all I used on this is uh, mink, pig mink pigments, excuse me, dry mud and Europe dust, and uh, just applied them wet. So I basically just put a coat of thinner on the vehicle. I just used the acrylic thinner, which is the X20A, a Tamiya acrylic thinner uh, for acrylic paint, and just dabbed it all on uh, using that. Now it's fairly dark at the moment, but it's, it uh, changes colour as it dries. And just wiping it off on the track pads too, because I've got the rubber track pads. Now obviously I painted those NATO black before I put them on. But yeah, just rubbing the, the dirt off those. Alright, final scratches and highlights using a uh, graphite pencil. You can pretty much use whatever pencil you want. I find the 3B is a little bit softer, so it tends to work quite well. That's pretty much what I use here. You see that the camera picks it up in some areas really easily, in other areas it just, just depends what angle you're on as to whether or not you're actually going to see it or not. Now I actually go over the spokes of the uh, drive sprocket and the idle wheel. Uh, sorry, the wall the idle wheel is flat, but go over the spokes of those uh, and just polish up the surface, make it look uh, metallic, and then pick out a few of the rims around the edges, make it look like they've made in contact with something which has rubbed the dust off and sort of scratched it a bit. Do the tracks with them. Now I did that sort of random, as you can see, I'm just going over the raised areas pretty much. Um, just to get that to stand out. Make it look like some of the dirt's been scratched off. Here I am very delicately replacing the tracks. <laughs> uh, the kit's so tough, it's really, really great. And that, that little mechanism there, it just clicks into place perfectly. Uh, you gotta love it. Yeah, yes, 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 we fixed them. Yes, thank you. Right, right, criticizing myself. Um, yeah, just a few photos just showing off the end of the kit. I love this kit. I had so much fun building it. Thanks again to Legendary Builder um, for pointing it out and Reginald ESQ for helping us with the uh, paint scheme. That was really neat of you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, please go to their channels and, and subscribe to them. They'd, uh, they'd really like it. Uh, if they could get some followers going, it'd be great. Um, Reginald's got a few, but uh, more are always welcome. So thanks for watching everyone. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll put all the details in the description down below. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for another one. We're going to have another video coming very soon. Take care.